Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Dr. Mahira Moin, your presenter today. And I'm an assistant professor at Dow College of Biotechnology. I have earned my PhD in organic medicine chemistry. And today I will be talking to you about one of the most important topic in organic chemistry that is called the hybridization. So let's begin. So these are the five major topics that we will be covering in today's lecture. We will start our lecture by describing what a covalent bond is and how many different types of covalent bonds are found in organic molecules. Secondly, we will be looking at the molecular orbital theory. And after covering these two basic concepts, we will be uh, explaining or understanding our main topic which is the hybridization. And then we will be looking at the types of hybridization that are found in organic molecules as well as the characteristics of the hybrid orbitals. So our learning objectives from today's lecture are that you should be able to describe the nature of a covalent bond at the molecular level. You should be able to define hybridization you should be able to predict the hybridization of various organic molecules in three-dimensional space and you should be able to discuss the geometry of various organic molecules. So the first thing that you uh, that must come to your mind is why is it important for you to learn about uh, hybridization? Well, uh, the answer is very simple because hybridization is one of the phenomena that nature uses in order to bring extra stability to different systems uh, or molecules and it is basically the uh, driving force that work uh, behind bringing the stability uh, by minimizing the total energy content of a particular system under observation or in question and without hybridization, the molecules that are the fundamental building blocks of our world and our cells would be much more unstable. So here in this slide, I have put some examples from the daily life. Uh, and by looking at these pictures, you can easily appreciate the importance of hybridization in uh, your daily life. Here you can see that various living organisms like plants and fruits and vegetables of, uh, or animals as well as non-living objects uh, as shown over here both uh, can exhibit the phenomena of hybridization. Well the first picture shows uh, some flowers and obviously you can gather by looking at this picture that this plant is a hybrid plant that must have been produced um, by crossing two different plants having white flowers and red flowers. Similarly, the fruit shown over here is called the plum cot and that would that is the hybrid version of a cross between apricot and a plum. Similarly, all the vehicles that are that have been shown over here like trains and electric cars as well as the submarines, these are also the hybrid non-living objects that use one um, uh, or more than one power modes in order for them to function effectively. So hybridization in its simplest form is nothing just the mixing of two different traits in order to develop the product which is much more stable or having enhanced property in, uh, properties uh, in any respect. So that was the general concept of hybridization. But what about uh, the importance of hybridization for a chemist or a chemistry student? Well, again, if you uh, are able to envision molecules in three-dimensional space, that would be the skill that will further enhance your chemistry skills because you will be able to describe the chemical reactivity of a particular molecule in uh, envision uh, its 
uh, structure in the three dimensional space and hence you will be able to define its chemical as well as physical properties accurately and correctly so as you all know that uh, as an organic chemist, we are mostly uh, involved in studying about the covalent bond. And I am assuming that your previous knowledge uh, would tell you that a covalent bond is formed by the sharing of electrons between two atoms. Now, in this lecture and in this slide particularly, and in the upcoming slides, we will be defining the formation of a covalent bond at the molecular level. So what actually happens at the molecular level when a covalent bond is formed, <clears throat> actually two atomic orbitals overlap, uh, sharing the same region in space and they result in the formation of new orbitals that are called the molecular orbitals. And these newly formed molecular orbitals are actually the covalent bonds. And just like the atomic orbitals, a molecular orbital can also accommodate only two electrons in them. So there are three major uh, conditions that mm, are very crucial in order to form uh, a covalent bond. The first one is that the combining orbital should be half filled. Second is the proper alignment uh, of these uh, atomic orbital is absolutely crucial in order for them to undergo an effective overlap. Number three is the electrons that will be residing in the so-called molecular or the covalent bonds should have opposite spins. So that was all about how a covalent bond is formed in general terms. Now we will be looking at the molecular orbital theory and before touching upon this particular topic I would like you to introduce uh, I would like to introduce to you uh, some of the most modern concepts uh, regarding the nature of an electron in terms of quantum mechanics or wave mechanics. Well according to the quantum mechanics uh, an electron is the entity that has got a dual nature. It can behave like a particle and it can behave like a wave. So when we have uh, established the fact that our electron can behave like a wave, then it must exhibit some of the properties of waves. And one of the most important property that is associated to the waves, be it uh, water waves or sound waves, uh, or any type of waves is their overlap. Now waves of any type can overlap in two different fashions. Either they can overlap in uh, as a constructive combination which is shown over here or they can overlap as a destructive combination and when the constructive combination happens um, it means that the combining waves uh, are reinforcing each other presence and when the destructive combination happens it means the waves are cancelling out each other presence and when we apply this analogy to the formation of atomic or to the formation of chemical bonds and the combination of atomic orbitals uh, we can say that when the atomic orbitals combine constructively they will behave like waves that will result in the formation of a bond and if these atomic orbitals are combining in a destructive fashion it means that there is a presence of a node between them that will restrict the formation of a chemical bond so as we have already established that there are two different types of covalent bonds one is called the sigma bond and the other bond and the other one is called the pi bond so here in this diagram uh, we are looking at the formation of a single bond at the molecular level using the molecular orbital theory and to begin with you have got two atom 
here we are using the example of hydrogen molecule and as you all know that hydrogen molecule uh, has got a single covalent bond or the sigma bond between two hydrogen atoms so here are the two atomic orbital that is called the one as atomic orbital of one hydrogen atom and there is another one that is called the one as atomic orbital of the second hydrogen atom and both of these atomic orbital before they uh, start to overlap they are occupied with half filled uh, these are the half filled orbitals meaning that they possess one unpaired electron in them so once they overlap in a constructive fashion, they give rise to the formation of a molecular orbital that is called the sigma bonding molecular orbital. And when these two atomic orbitals combine in a destructive fashion, they give rise to the formation of anti-bonding molecular orbital designated by sigma star. Now if you have noticed, the sigma bonding molecular orbital is much less in energy then uh, the starting atomic 1s atomic orbitals of each of the hydrogen atoms in contrast to that the sigma star anti-bonding molecular orbitals are much higher in energy than the starting 1s atomic uh, orbitals of both the hydrogen atoms the other difference is there is no nodal plane found uh, in the sigma bonding molecular orbital whereas uh, there is a nodal plane that is found between uh, the two lobes of the sigma star antibonding molecular orbital and this nodal plane is the region where the probability of finding an electron according to the quantum mechanics is zero now when the molecular sigma bonding molecular orbitals are formed both of the electrons will reside in this sigma bonding molecular orbital which is much lower in energy and hence is more stable but in order for these two electrons to accommodate this molecular bonding molecular of sigma bonding molecular orbital these electron must have opposite spin and hence the sigma covalent bond is formed between two hydrogen atoms the second form of a covalent bond is called the pi bond and here in this diagram uh, we can easily uh, depict the formation of a pi bond at the molecular level again uh, we will be using the same pattern where we will be using the two atomic orbitals from two uh, atoms the only difference is when we are discussing the formation of a pi bond it means that the orbitals that will be involved in the formation of the pi bond are exclusively the p orbitals so and the rest of the description would be the same uh, that is when these two p orbitals atomic orbitals of two different atoms combine in a constructive manner they will uh, result in the formation of pi bonding molecular orbital and when these two p atomic orbitals of two dis different uh, atoms combine in a destructive way they will give rise to the formation of pi star anti-bonding orbitals when i say that they combine constructively it means that the blue lobes of both the orbitals will overlap sideways and the green lobes will overlap sideways whereas in the anti-bonding pi star uh, molecular orbital the blue lobe of one orbital will come uh, will overlap with the green lobe of the other and hence there would be two pla uh, nodal planes found in the anti-bonding molecular orbitals and there will be just one nodal plane in the pi bonding molecular orbitals and the presence of these two nodal planes will restrict the formation of a bond uh, in the pi star bonding molecular orbital whereas the pi bonding molecular orbital will make a pi bond and is uh, will be much more stable than the anti bonding pi molecular orbital 
so defining different types of uh, covalent bonds we have already established that there are different types of two different types of covalent bonds one is called the sigma bond and the other one is called the pi bond now the sigma bond formation uh, has got three options the first one is by the overlap of two s orbitals the s orbitals occupies the spherical shape in three dimensions and when these two s orbitals of two different atoms combine or overlap constructively in a linear way they give rise to the formation of a sigma bonding molecular orbital the second option for the formation of the sigma bond is via the overlap of 1s and 1p orbital of two different atoms but again uh, here again the two orbitals will overlap linearly and they will end up making a sigma bonding molecular orbital the third option for the formation of a sigma bond is by the overlap of two p orbitals but the condition is that these two p orbitals when they are involved in the formation of a sigma bond they must collide linearly in order to give rise to the formation of a sigma bonding molecular orbital another type of a covalent bond is the pi bond and here the major difference is that uh, pi bond will always be formed by the overlap of p orbitals but when a covalent bond is of the type of pi bond it means that the p orbital will overlap sidewise or in a parallel way in order to give rise to the formation of a pi bond so that was all about the covalent bond and how a covalent bond is formed at the molecular level as well as how many different types of uh, covalent bonds are found in organic molecules as well as uh, how will they overlap in the three dimensional space now we are going to discuss about our topic which is the hybridization in the light of quantum mechanics so what quantum mechanic is well this is the theory uh, that was uh, discovered by schrodinger and later on it was uh, called quantum mechanics by heisenberg this quantum mechanics or the wave mechanics uh, forms the basis of our modern understanding of bonding in all organic molecules and at the heart of quantum mechanics are some mathematical derivations or equations that are that will define uh, some important functions that are called the wave functions and these are called uh, these are defined as uh, the psi functions in greek so what each wave function is well actually a wave function corresponds to different energy state of an electron it also defines the prob relative probability of finding an electron in a particular volume of a space uh, with respect to the nucleus also the energy associated with each state of an electron uh, can be described using this wave function and this energy that is related to different uh, levels of um, atomic orbital is very very quantized in nature so in its simplest form hybridization is just the mixing of two different traits i have already explained to you but in the light of the modern quantum mechanics more scientifically we can define orbital hybridization as a mathematical approach that will involve uh, the combination of individual wave functions coming from different uh, combining orbitals and here since we are talking about the carbon our orbitals would be s and p to obtain wave functions for new orbitals and these new orbitals are called the hybrid orbitals and the formation of these hybrid or hybrid orbitals in such a manner is called 
the the phenomena of hybridization and on the basis of uh, the quantum mechanics we can satisfactorily define the structure of methane molecule as a tetravalent uh, carbon so here in this diagram different orbitals uh, 2s orbital and 2p orbitals uh, have been shown in three dimensional space and you must uh, envision them as objects that are suspended in three dimensional space so a 2s orbital in the three dimensional space would be sphere like whereas the 2p orbitals would be dumbbell like and the 2p orbitals would acquire three orientations along the three axes that are oriented in three dimensional space namely x axis y axis and z axis so if you uh, look at this diagram uh, in terms of the quantum mechanics or in terms of the wave function each p orbital has got two lobes one is the positive lobe and the other one is the negative lobe and the center of the 2s orbital is always positive so these are the orientations that these two um, orbitals occupy in the three dimensional space with regard to the configuration of carbon atom specifically so how uh, defining the types of hybridization in organic molecules uh, nature has restricted the carbon uh, in order for it to form only three types of hybridization it can undergo carbon can acquire sp3 hybridization as shown in the example of methane carbon can acquire an sp2 hybridization Uh, and the example for that particular hybridization is the ethene molecule and carbon can also acquire sp hybridization as shown in the molecule of ethene and these are the only three different types of hybridizations that will be found in all organic molecules with regard to the carbon atoms exclusively so again how these uh, sp3 hybrid orbitals are formed uh, now look at the electronic configuration of carbon atom at the ground state and at the excited state and as i have already mentioned to you that we since the valence electrons are the ones that will make a covalent bond uh, so we will be looking at the electronic configuration of carbon involving its valence electrons when the carbon is in its ground state the valence electron configuration would be this the 2s orbital will occupy two electrons will be filled with two unpaired uh, two paired electrons and the 2p orbitals would be occupied uh, with two unpaired electrons and one of the p orbital would be the vacant when this carbon gets excited one of the electron from the 2s orbital will jump into the vacant 2p orbital now this particular configuration where all the carbon all the uh, electrons are in, in are unpaired uh, in the carbon atom that particular state of carbon is called the excited state so when one of the 2s and three of the 2p orbitals combine together or mix together they give rise to the formation of four degenerated new orbitals that are called the sp3 hybridized orbitals and the phenomena of mixing of 1 2s orbital with those of 3 2p orbital is called the process of hybridization and the resulting new orbitals are called the sp3 hybrid orbit, orbit, uh, orbitals now in order to understand 
uh, this uh, diagram clearly uh, I would like to give you an example suppose you have got um, one can of strawberry juice and three cans of pineapple juice sitting in your kitchen cabinet you take them out all four of them and put them in the blender and mix them together ideally how many cans you should get as a resultant ideally four that will be your sp3 hybridized juice that you have just prepared since you have utilized all the four uh, cans one of the strawberry and three of the pineapple then you are not left with any unused pineapple juice so in when you are making an sp3 juice it means that you are utilizing all the three uh, all the four cans uh, and you are not left with any unused pineapple juice that will be your unhybridized PO3 so when your carbon undergoes sp3 hybridized uh, hybridization it will not have any unhybridized orbital on it and the resulting orbitals will be called the sp3 hybridized, uh, hybridized orbitals and that orbitals would be 4 in number so this is the particular shape of one of the sp3 hybridized orbital where you can see two different lobes one lobe is bigger in size having a positive wave function and the other one is uh, much smaller in size having the negative wave function and when four of these atomic orbitals combine together in order to form a molecule of methane uh, the diagram becomes a bit cumbersome and it will look like this and each of the three s four of the sp3 hybridized orbital will orient themselves in the three dimensional space in the shape of a tetrahedron in order to minimize the repulsion amongst themselves and in, do in doing so they will acquire a particular geometry in the three dimensional space having an angle of 109.5 degrees so now we can clearly define the structure of methane in terms of quantum mechanics because our car carbon has now established or confirmed its role to be a tetravalent carbon in contrast to be the divalent and electron diffraction and spectroscopic studies have confirmed this particular nature of carbon as a tetravalent atom a specific example is the molecule of methane where you can see that the central carbon is sp3 hybridized and all of the sp3 four of the sp3 hybridized orbitals are oriented uh, as a tetrahedron in the three dimensional space and now this carbon is ready to combine uh, with one s orbital from four different hydrogen atoms each of the hydrogen 1s orbital of the hydrogen atom has got one electron in them and each of the sp3 hybridized orbital of the carbon will have one electron in them so these two combine together in order to form a sigma covalent bond in methane molecule between carbon and hydrogen so each carbon hydrogen covalent bond is the result of the overlap of an sp3 orbital from the carbon and one s orbital from the hydrogen all ch bond in the methane molecule are sigma bonds and the bond angle between them is 109.5 degrees now the characteristics of hybrid orbitals just like uh, consider this as the juice that you have prepared and we can call it the sp3 juice 
and if you taste the, your uh, sp3 juice you will instantly notice that this sp3 juice has got uh, a taste more like the pineapple because the content of the pineapple cans was higher than the strawberry can because you mixed only one strawberry can with three pineapple cans so obviously the taste will be more towards the uh, pineapple like so when we apply this analogy to the sp3 to the characteristics of the sp3 orbitals we can confirm that our sp3 orbital will have only 25 percent of the s character and 75 percent of the p character now each sp3 orbital of carbon will possess one electron and the four new sp3 orbitals are identical uh, in energy and shape but they will differ only in their orientation in three dimensional space that these will be directed as a tetrahedron along the three axes which is x y and z so how to predict the hybridization of a particular molecule when you have been given the lowest structure for a particular molecule now all you got to do is to remember that whatever atom you are interested in in order to define the hybridization you first need to make sure whether that particular atom has got a lone pair on it or it doesn't have a lone pair on it if it is an atom that doesn't bear uh, a lone pair on it it means that we just need to count the sigma bond uh, in the Lewis structure and if it is an atom that bears a lone pair then you will have to count the sigma bond as well as the lone pairs that it contains pi bonds you are not supposed to count in order to define the hybridization of a particular atom in a particular molecule now look at this chart here we can see we are talking about the hybridization of carbon particularly and the type of hybridization in all of the organic molecules that exist on the face of the earth carbon can acquire only these three type of hybridizations it can either be as a carbon that is sp3 hybridized it can be a carbon either as uh, an sp2 hybridized carbon or it can be a sp3 hybridized carbon and again by describing by looking at the uh, hybridization you can predict what specific geometry each specific hybridization for that particular carbon atom will acquire in the three dimensional space so if your carbon is in the three sp3 hybridized mode it means that it will acquire a tetrahedral uh, geometry in the three dimensional space having 109.5 degree uh, angle between all the orbitals if your uh, carbon is sp2 hybridized then it will be uh, the geometry will be the trigonal planar in the three dimensional space having a bond angle of 120 degrees and if your carbon is sp hybridized it means that it has got a linear geometry having a bond angle of 180 degrees now just like our example of the juices that we have just prepared sp for the preparation of the sp juice sp3 juice you have utilized all the three four cans one strawberry and three pineapple juices so you were not left with any unused pineapple juice and in that case when we apply this analogy uh, to the hybridization of the sp3 type we can say that the number of hybrid orbitals we can get is four and since we have did not we were not left with any unused pineapple juice it means that we are not 
expecting any unhybridized p orbital when we are describing the geometry uh, or the hybridization of a carbon that is sp3 hybridized when you are going to make the sp2 juice it means that you are combining one strawberry can with two pineapple cans and you will be left with one unused pineapple can and in that case that pineapple uh, can will stay in your cabinet it won't go anywhere it is there so it means that your sp2 juice will have trigonal planar geometry in the three dimensional space having 120 degrees and the number of hybrid orbitals would be 3 because you are uh, combining one as one strawberry can with two pineapple cans and the unused pineapple can which resides in your cabinet is still there and that would be the analogy for the unhybridized p orbital that will be present in the carbon that will be sp2 hybridized so in the sp hybridization if you want to make the sp juice it means you are combining one strawberry can with one pineapple can and you are left with two cans of the pineapple juice that remains unused but they are still there in your cabinet they have not gone anywhere so the geometry will be the linear having 180 degrees angle and the number of hybrid orbitals would be 2 and the number of unhybridized orbitals would also be the 2 so here are some examples and if you have been given the Lewis structures which is the two dimensional depiction of organic molecules on paper or board then how will you predict uh, uh, the hybridization of a particular atom in a particular molecule well I have already told you that you will have to first determine whether the atom in question does possesses a lone pair or does it not if it does then you will have to count the sigma bond and its lone pair and if it doesn't contain the lone pair then you will just have to count the sigma bonds so now in this example the highlighted atoms are all carbon atoms okay and we want to predict the hybridization of each of these three carbons now we know that carbon doesn't possess any lone pair of electrons on it so all we got to do is to count the sigma bonds that are evident in this Lewis structure so the uh, so in the first structure this first carbon is has formed four sigma bonds it means it is sp3 hybridized the second carbon has formed four sigma bond it is also sp3 hybridized the third carbon is uh, has also formed four sigma bonds and thus this is also sp3 hybridized but if i want to ask you about the hybridization of this particular carbon then how will you do that again you will have to establish that you will have to confirm that the atom is carbon which does not pair which does not possess any lone pair on it and it is triply bonded it is a triply bonded carbon so in a triply bonded carbon you have got one sigma bond and two pi bonds and you are not supposed to count any pi bond in order to predict the hybridization of a particular atom so in if i want to ask you about the hybridization of this particular carbon your answer should be sp hybridization because this carbon is making two sigma bonds one over here and one over here now that was the case when we were describing the hybridization involving carbon atoms now in the example we have got two heteroatoms attached in our organic molecules and that heteroatom is the nitrogen atom and we know that nitrogen does possess a lone pair so in order to define the highlighted nitrogen atom in this particular molecule uh, we need to count the sigma bond as well as the pi bonds the lone pairs that are present on nitrogen uh, 
so in order to describe the uh, hybridization of this particular nitrogen in this part of the molecule we will have to count sigma bonds which is one over here and one over there two and the lone pair so in total it has got three groups attached to it so it will be sp2 hybridized the same nitrogen when it is covalently bonded via three single bonds then the same nitrogen atom bearing the lone pair will acquire the sp3 hybridization again in this example you can see that there are four carbons and all of them are doubly bonded carbons so the terminal carbons are sp2 hybridized because they have got one two and three sigma bonds and the middle carbons are, have got one two and each carbon has got two sigma bonds so uh, this one of each of one of them is sp hybridized so here in this activity you have been given the molecule of methane and we have already done the example of uh, methane here is the molecule of ethane so let's do this example in ethane there are dash carbon single bond hydrogen bonds well there are six carbon hydrogen bonds and dash carbon single bond carbon one carbon single bond carbon and all of them are sigma bonds each ch bond is the result of the overlap of dash hybrid orbital form carbon which is the sp3 and dash orbital from the hydrogen which is 1s orbital the carbon single bond carbon bond arises from the overlap of dash orbitals one from each carbon well this will also be the sp3 orbital and all the ch bonds and the cc bonds are all sigma bonds in the molecule of ethane so this diagram again shows uh, the formation of sp2 hybrid orbitals um, again we will start with the ground state and in the ground state the carbon has got four electron in its uh, valence shell and since it is in the ground state the 2s orbital will occur, uh, will be filled with two unpaired uh, two paired electrons and the 2p orbital will be filled with two unpaired electrons having one p orbital vacant so when this carbon becomes excited one of the electron from the 2s orbital will jump into the 2p vacant orbital and now this carbon is called a, um, as the excited carbon and one of the 2s orbital will combine with the three 2p orbitals uh, in order to give rise to the formation of three sp2 hybridized orbitals and one of the um, orbital will remain unhybridized having unpaired electron just like the example of the uh, juices that I have already explained explained to you in the previous slide so this is the shape of uh, ethylene molecule and here you can clearly see that the carbon is in the middle and each carbon is uh, and the central carbon is sp2 hybridized and when your carbon is sp2 hybridized it means it will acquire a trigonal planar structure in the three dimensional space so here you can see a triangle shown as white lobes okay and when tho those the same um, orbital shape will uh, be coming from the second carbon and the structure will become like this you can see a trigonal planar structure over here and the remaining p orbitals will overlap sidewise in order to form, uh, make a pi bond in ethylene molecule
so here this is the depiction for the sp hybridized orbitals of carbon and again here you will be mixing uh, the 2s orbital with one uh, of the 2p orbital and you end up making two sp orbitals and two unhybridized p orbital So now this is the shape of acetylene molecule and on the left again you will be shown exclusively the uh, carbon that has undergone uh, an sp3 hybridization that will be shown over here as the white loops and as you can see that the geometry is linear having the bond angle of uh, 180 degrees between these two uh, orbitals and the remaining red lobes and the blue lobes are the p orbitals that will result in the formation of a pi two pi bonds above and below the plane of the sigma bond uh, that is found in uh, acetylene molecule so this is the sample quiz that uh, you will be uh, coming into your exam and have a look at it and you will get a rough idea that how uh, the sample paper uh, examination paper will be looked like. So, in summary, we can define hybridization is uh, just the mixing of um, atomic orbitals to yield molecular orbitals that are uh, much uh, lower in energy and hence more stable and these molecular orbitals will have a specified geometry in three dimensional space. Hybridization will bring extra stability to the molecules. It will allow to envision molecules in three dimensional space giving you a better understanding of, or, or a better perspective of the chemical reactivity associated with a particular atom or a molecule as well as its chemical and physical properties. Covalent bonds become strengthened as the overlap between the atomic orbital be, uh, increases. An effective overlap is mandatory in order to form uh, a covalent bond and this will only be possible if the uh, orientation of the combining orbital in the three dimensional space is proper. All carbon present in every organic molecule only three types of hybridization that is sp3, sp2 and sp. So that is all about the hybridization. I hope uh, that you have got uh, the understanding of the topic of hybridization and it will help you uh, to visualize uh, molecules in the three dimensional space in order to define uh, the chemical reactivity of a particular atom or a molecule.